Let's talk about a franchise we have covered that has recently released a new installment. All right. Resident Evil. They put out six films from 2002 to 2016 that were part of the same serialized storyline. Four of them were directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, and they were all written and produced by him. And uh, the final one was called The Final Chapter, which definitively ended that franchise, wrapping it up once and for all. The thing is, the movies weren't doing all that well in America anymore, but they were doing huge business overseas still. All of them, all six of those Mila Jovovich Resident Evil movies did massive in like Japan and China and shit. And so uh, they did not want to let the franchise go. But W.S. was was ending his thing. So he stayed on with a producer credit. And while they were still making his final movie, they announced that soon after they were going to reboot the franchise. Um, which. I mean, I'm not happy with. I I think Resident Evil is great. It's one of the best modern franchises, along with Fast and the <laughs> Furious. I really believe that. I know um, you do. Yeah, uh, I think there's six really fucking fun movies. Like honestly, five of them are, are I love. Um, Who directed the other two, if not Paul W S? Because I, I didn't know the, about that. One of them was just W S as like assistant director, and then one of them they hired the dude, this dude Russell Mulcahy, who directed Highlander. Okay. All right. Um, so for this, WS, I mean, I don't think WS even had a hand in hiring. It was just sort of like he kept his name on the thing and they asked him for his input. But uh, the studio hired this fella, Johannes Roberts. Yeah. And he is best known these days, I think, for the 47 Meters Down movies. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, which you love. Which are right? pretty good. I. I love him. Two great shark movies. And in between those movies, he did The Stranger's Prey at Night, which I also right. like. So so I'm Christina a fan Hendrix, of this guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Christina Hendricks. Uh, and now here he is back in business with Resident Evil, the seventh Resident Evil movie, but the first in a new storyline. Welcome to Raccoon City. What'd you think? All right, it, uh, I think it's worse than both those shark movies and that Strangers movie. Uh, all right, so it it came out November twenty fourth of last year on a budget of twenty five million dollars, pretty low, and uh, it ended up making forty one point nine worldwide, which is a disappointment to be honest. That's that's what the worldwide gross had been made, like without taking the domestic into consideration. So like most of the originals like at least doubled that. But so this is this is a disappointment. I don't think it's bad enough that I'll say they'll never make a sequel cuz I still think they might, but it's not great. I, it well, came in at number also, 51 at the All these movies that came out during the pandemic, you have to sort of look at differently. Yeah, according to the Wikipedia page it streamed really well. Like people rented it a lot. So Take that for what it is. Yeah, I could believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it came in at number 51 at the domestic box office uh, between The Green Knight and The French Dispatch. You know, and it never looks good when like wow. a big blockbuster is between like more boutique films. Yeah, an A24 movie, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a fucking searchlight, probably. Um, so, so, I mean, I guess let's just talk about it. So what they're doing here is trying to be more faithful to the games. Have you ever played the games? No, I have not. Have you? I played the first two games when they came out. I didn't beat either one of them because, as I told you, Metal Gear Solid is the only game that ever inspired me to finish it. Um, but, but I liked those games and I played them a bunch. Most of the first one takes place in a mansion. Most of the second one takes place in that police station, and uh, and that's why those are the prime locations in this movie. Um, Do you know what Dead Rising is? It's another zombie video game, right? Yes, that was what I would play on, like the PlayStation Two. We'd play Dead Rising Two. That was a fun game. That was like all in a mall. Maybe the, maybe that's why I played it. It was a better setting, I thought. Well, yeah, I mean that's just a rip off of Dawn of the Dead, right? 
It's very fun. Yeah. You can like play. You can like go and beat them with weights and golf clubs and like stuffed animals. Great game. Nail guns. That's that sounds fun. fun. I would like that. But oh, I liked so Resident Evil at the time. It wasn't a fun game. They were going for like a horror vibe where like you wouldn't see zombies that often, and then when you would, it would freak you out. Yeah. Well, this is just like zombies everywhere. You just run in stores, pick up CD records, and throw them at zombies. It's so fun. It's a lot. Of, like if you wanted, <laughs> it's like Grand Theft Auto basically. If you want to kill time, CD like that. CD records. Yeah, you get like CDs. It's a CD record. Well, uh, you throw like the actual, you throw the records at them. Oh, like a, like for a turntable, like, like a, vinyl, like on Sh- in Shaun of the Dead where they throw the record at the zombies. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like gotcha. that. It's very, it's very, okay. very, very fun game. Okay, so, um, so Alice, the character Mila Jovovich played, is not a character in the games. Uh, uh, supposedly, actually. Um, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson uh, had written an unrelated zombie screenplay inspired by Resident Evil. And then when they hired him to do Resident Evil, he just reverse engineered it into a Resident Evil movie. So some of the stuff that's in there is just like from his imagination. God forbid. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, But now in this one... Jill Valentine and Claire Redfield and Chris Redfield and Albert Wesker. And they're all characters that eventually showed up in the movies, but like they're getting the star treatment in this Leon Kennedy too. I don't even know if he was in the Paul W.S. movies, but I do remember that dude from the games who plays them in the other ones who plays uh, Chris. Oh, I think the Redfields in the original Claire was Allie Larder and Chris oh. was Wentworth Miller. Went. Yeah, I never remember that guy. He was in The Loft, right? He was in Prison Break and uh, The Flash. I know her. She Well, I know her, from, but she's in those uh, Final Destinations. Yeah, and Heroes. Her name is Clear in those movies, actually. That's weirdly, right, though. yeah. She's also the uh, temptress in Obsession. Yes, you know that? yes, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Love she, it. Like, yeah. She shows Idris Elba her bra in his car, and he's like, oh! <laughs> Yeah, right. that's that's a, one of the most fun movies of all time. It's a great movie. Yeah, I love that one. Um, all right, yeah. so so the movie starts with a bit of a flashback, um, and uh, it's taking place at an Umbrella Corporation facility, of course, and uh, they are experimenting on kids or something, and we meet two of them, and it turns out they're Chris and Claire. And so video game fans are going, oh, they're going to grow up into those guys. And people who don't know the video games are like, all right. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, somebody's watching the Golden Girls in that scene. Oh, yeah? I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, I, I just think the Golden Girls are really hot in, in movies right now. I've been seeing them everywhere. I just watched that movie uh, Fresh with Sebastian Stan as a cannibal. Yeah, it's in that. And um, yeah, there's a scene in that movie where like they play the Golden Girls theme song. And then I was watching How I Met Your Father, the spinoff of How I Met Your Mother. Oh. And one character was talking about Rue McClanahan and how that's his favorite Golden Girl. They're everywhere. Why do you think? Was it because of Betty White recently? Is that why it's popping up? Maybe. Maybe they're in the collective consciousness because of Betty White. I feel like all this shit would have been written before she died. Yeah. Um, I think it's just like in... It's an uh, inoffensive thing that everyone likes, the Golden Girls. But it was like a thing like leading up, right? It was like the countdown to Betty White turning 100. That was like a thing for a while. Yeah, but I feel like that was a thing for like... I feel like for like 20 years, we were like, <laughs> Betty White's going to die. We better make her feel loved. Yeah. And then but it like, really started ramping up 20 in the last years. year. So I don't know. What was she doing? Like all her shit had been canceled. Hot in Cleveland. She was no longer hot in Cleveland at 99. Oh, come on. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cold there. Um, All right. So then. We're done with the flashback. We get to present day, but it's not present day. It's September 30th, 1998. Yeah. I'm two months I old. <laughs> I question the wisdom in making this a period piece. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I understand why we're doing it. It's when the games came out. So, like, but, like, who cares? Just do it now. Like what about is there it anything being 1998? 
Right. I mean, not that. They don't have cell phones as much, I guess. So that helps. But they have walkie-talkies. They're all cops anyway. I mean, we don't really see anything. At one point, someone's playing Snake on their phone. I was like, oh, it must be 1998. Yeah, there's really nothing to... Like, if we didn't know it was 1998, we would never guess it. Even the song, at one point, uh, he listens to Journey. Donald Logue listens to Journey. Which yeah, is not it's not even from the 90s. Thing. Yeah, it, yeah. Should, it should be like a grunge or like Eminem or something. Yeah, Jimmy Boot, a listener of the podcast, I thought had the best review on Letterboxd about this movie. <laughs> he gave it three stars and he wrote, he's a listener of the franchise. Uh, I love how Donal Logue's role is to let you know everyone's full name and that it is set in the late 90s. <laughs> and then he, he wrote a quote. Albert Wesker and Jill Valentine, if you want some alone time, I suggest you go to Blockbuster Video and rent Titanic on VHS. Leon S. Kennedy, cut your hair. You look like one of the Spice Girls. Hold on, I'm getting a call from Chris Redfield. Hey, Chris Redfield, what's up? <laughs> so he's like that character in the game that you just go to to talk to, basically. Yeah, for sure. It's great. L- Leon S. It's Kennedy. so funny. funny. Leon S. Kennedy, yeah. He, he does say that in the game. I he's That's Leon funny. S. Kennedy. Yeah. What's your favorite Journey song? Um, I mean, I don't like any of them. Are you don't serious? You don't like any Journey song? <laughs> That's like that seems crazy. Faithfully, I mean, everyone has like a soft. I, I, what does that even sound like? Are you listening to Journey? No, but I know. Why Journey do you like songs. Journey? I don't like. But Journey. why? You're so young. I constantly reference things. That are like famous that you it's don't journey. know anything about. It's very, it's very, it's like Bon Jovi or Guns N' Roses or whatever. I don't believe that it is. Don't stop I mean, believing. It's like one of the most famous songs of all time. Open Arms, but is that's famous, it. Right? What's I don't know. Open Arms. How does that sound? Here, here's Faithfully. This is the one Logan likes. I'm just naming. It. I'm not saying I like it. Jesus, Logan, I bet G would like this song. <laughs> Fucking most boring guitar solo I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> All right, let's try open arms. Oh, God, this piano. Put away the piano. Oh, come on. This is a beautiful song. Oh. Oh, I know this. Are you not wet right now? (laughs) No, I like that one. You're right. You're right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll give you that one. Faithfully is boring, but open arms is a good time. That's that's my favorite one. Open arms. Get out of here. Don't (laughs) stop believing. So funny. All right. Um, so let's let's meet our new cast, I guess. We've got um I mean the lead is is uh is Claire. She's played by Kaya Scodelario. Um and you know they really ch- they're they're trying with her. What do you mean? I thought she was good. Kaya MVP Scodel- spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Scodelario. You know, she was discovered for Skins. Have you ever watched Skins? No, but that's the royal family woman, right? What? Isn't the, the royal, royal fa- family the, woman? The girl no, that that's she's suits. in the royal family. That suits dumbass. Oh. What's her name? What's that girl's name? <laughs> Meghan Markle. Meghan uh, Markle. What a mistake. Yeah, no, the... No, Skins was the classic British teen show of the 2000s, (laughs) all right? So while we were showing the OC here in America, they had Skins, all right? And they had Nicholas Holt. All right, listen, why don't you shut the fuck up? That's what they had in Canada, all right? They had Drake in a wheelchair (laughs) up in Canada. Of course I watched Degrassi. But Skins... In, uh, in England, they had Nicholas Holt as a sociopath, as Tony, and they had... Oh, I bet he's um, good in that. Yeah, they had the guy slum- from Slumdog Millionaire. He's he's one Dev of the Patel? guys on that. Yeah, Dev Patel. So th- they were the most famous. They became famous off of that show. But uh, 
Tony's sister, his little sister, was played by Kaya Scodelario, and she played a character named Effie. And Effie was the best character on the show. Everyone loved her, okay? Because Kaya Scodelario, she's got an amazing look. She's really fascinating to look at, and she's incredibly charismatic. And Effie did not have any lines. She was a silent character. And sometimes they would focus an episode on her and you were like following her around and she just wasn't talking to anybody. And it was interesting. And so everyone thought Kaya Scodelaria was awesome. All right. She was going to be this amazing actress. She was clearly the breakout female actor on the show. And then all of a sudden they put her in movies and started giving her lines. Yeah. And you don't like it. You ever see Crawl? You never saw that movie? I did. She's okay in that. Um, look, I I got no beef, no beef with with Scods, with my girl Scods, but um, you know, she she's just not what she was. Like we all we all thought she was gonna be one thing based on her incredibly charismatic role on Skins, and then it just went to show that she's just sort of like a generic young attractive actress. I think I I mean I don't know her from as much stuff as you I guess but I thought she was the best part of this movie. I thought she was pretty bad. There's one part where she like freak she, she like freaks out and she has to give like a tearful monologue where she's like crying and I was like, "Bro, you're out of your league." <laughs> Who is she with in the scene though? I mean, probably like Robbie someone Amell? I don't know. Look, Robbie Amell, we all know the Amells are wooden. They're made of wood. That is one one wooden family. He's not Green Arrow. He's not Green Arrow. I actually prefer this Amel. Uh, Stephen Amel has clearly been the breakout. You know, I I guess women, they want him to use his big cock on them. You know, he's he's like this big... (laughs) (laughs) He's this big gritty dude with like a beard. Robbie Amel is like more of a pretty boy. I feel like... Stephen Amell, he's built and he's and and he looks dangerous. Like he looks like the kind of guy you could take home to mom, but then he might smack you if you if you look at him wrong. <laughs> okay, so you yeah. like Robbie more? Yeah, I prefer Robbie. He just seems like less of a douchebag. Around the same time, Justin was put on the show Arrow, and Robbie was put on another show on the CW called The Tomorrow People, and I preferred that. Okay, I've never heard of The Tomorrow People. Yeah, it was all right. It was created by the same guy. Anyway, or all right. whatever. I, th- I think it was a British show. So, they're the siblings, and Robbie Amell is in Raccoon City as a, a cop. And basically, like, Raccoon City is a city owned by the Umbrella Corporation for, like, its employees to live. And everyone's been evacuated recently. Uh, but there's been an outbreak of the T-virus as a result of their experiments with kids, and the T-virus has created a zombie plague, all right? So there's just zombies all over Raccoon City, and these cops and this one girl, Claire, they've got to get out of there. Um, I guess we won't worry about that diner waitress we met earlier. <laughs> right. I guess she just died. <laughs> what, 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 what do we think about the other I guess cops? we can assume she died. <laughs> Uh, what do you think about what? Leon? What do we think of the cops? Yeah, Leon, the cop, uh, the actor Leon. Um, what, what's his name? Uh, he's played. He's played by uh, Avon Yogia, um, and I'm familiar with him from a Stars television show. Stars with a Z yep. uh, gave one of my favorite independent filmmakers, Greg Araki, sort of free reign to do a ten episode series called Now Apocalypse. And it's an amazing show, and I knew it wouldn't get renewed. It was always going to be too weird for them. Uh, but he's the lead of that show, and I loved him on that show. I, I think wow. he's I don't, I, I'm not sure of his purpose in this movie. Like, comic relief? Like, the character's kind of too stupid. They're constantly telling him about cop but shit. But he's also he's really wrong. hot. It's, it's weird. It is a weird choice, right? Yeah, I know, but why do you need that hot guy? Like, everyone in this movie's hot. You already have... You have Donald Logue, right? He's the character actor who's going to deliver the exposition. But then all the other cops, it's Robbie Amell, who's like, I mean, he doesn't have a hair on his body. <laughs> You've got, much like you, Logan. And he's it, uh, Tom Hopper, 
this shitty British actor who's trying to do an American accent, failing miserable the entire movie. Oh, all right. And and uh, and then it's the girl, right? She's a cop, too, isn't she? Jill Valentine. Right. Yeah. And she's Hannah John Kamen, who played the villain in Ant-Man on the Wasp, who's like one of the most beautiful women in the world. And so would definitely be a police officer in a small town in middle America. Right. These people are very high. I know I know Leon from the show Victorious. He was one of the boyfriends on Victorious. Oh, how about that? Did he yeah, date Victoria very, very... Justice or no. Grande? No, the other one. There's a third one. Uh Jade. Who? I don't I don't I don't know her name in real Who's life. Jade? I do. I mean she's on the show. Jade you like that David her. Caruso movie? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is oh, All right, I'm I'm looking name. up Victorious. Yeah, she's she's great. Though. Oh, he was she's the like, lead on that show, Twisted on ABC Family too. I remember that show. Eli- Elizabeth Gillies. You know, oh, who that is? yes, I do. Oh yeah, you do. Um, huh? Logan, Logan, Elizabeth, yeah, like Elizabeth it. Gillies is like top five celebrity crushes for me. Like really, fuck you know Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande is a. I think she's a hideous chud compared to Elizabeth Gillies. <laughs> Get out of town. <laughs> what do you know i watch listen she was on this fx show with dennis leary called sex and drugs and rock and roll which is one of the worst fucking shows ever created and i watched the whole first season just because elizabeth gillies was in it and i could not look away from her all right yeah, now you would love her she's on dynasty all right on the cw She's been on that show for five seasons of 22 episode seasons. And I have watched every episode, my friend, every episode in pure service to my simping of Elizabeth. Gillies. <laughs> you don't call her Liz, <laughs> Liz Gillies. Uh, maybe I do in my head, but I want I don't want to sound like a stalker. I think, right now. <laughs> I think that's actually what she goes by. I think like if you see her on Twitter, I think it's like Liz Gillies. Maybe. I'm yeah, wrong, I, fo- I'm... I follow her on, on Instagram. She in her. She's still friends with Grande, you know, which, oh, yeah, which sort of makes friends. me like it makes me like Grande that like she's not just like hanging out with Taylor Swift. Now she's still friends with her victorious people. But oh, yeah, um, absolutely. There's there's this nerdy guy on that show, Robbie. And they're like all they're friends with him too. Matt Bennett. You know who that is? He's like a guy. That's yeah, I do. Uh, He's got like a really big face, huge face, really big. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, they're all friends. That, yeah, that, I agree with you. Yeah. That makes me like, like a really huge cool. mouth. He looks like he could swallow Elizabeth Gillies head. Like big everything, though, like big eyes, big hair, big ears. Yeah, big eyes. Big, they call yeah. that the Amy Adams special. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> They're they're running around in this movie, so half of them go over to the the mansion, and they're gonna look around, and half of them are gonna hang out in the police parlor, and honestly, I think the whole purpose of the movie was so they can run across little things from the game, so people from the game, like fans of the game, could be like, "Oh, look that thing." <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I was doing the whole is. movie. There was like a statue in the in the police station and i was like oh yeah i remember that statue and then um at one point like there was a typewriter and i was like oh that's where you go to save (laughs) oh is that true that's funny yeah there's a i mean i don't want to get to the post credit scene did you but did you watch the post credit scene yeah oh and that helicopter when that helicopter goes through the window i remember that from the game too in the post credit scene the one guy gets his he gets like sunglasses so i figured that must have been like a video game thing because that made no Actually, sense with the rest of the yeah, movie. Yeah, I don't know if that's from the game or the movie. Like, th- there, so the main villain in the W.S. Anderson movies is Wesker. And Wesker, this whole movie, is just one of the cops. And so at the end of the movie, he gets his sunglasses in the mid credit sequence. And, and I guess we're like, oh, he's a villain now that he has sunglasses. Right. Yeah, so I yeah. guess that's a, that must be a video <laughs> game thing. Yeah, um, um, and and they also in that scene introduce a character, and we're supposed to think it's really significant. And she's like, "My name is Ada Wong." And then the scene ends, and you're and I I assume like all the people in the audience were supposed to go like, "Oh, fucking Ada Wong, motherfucker!" <laughs> uh, but I don't know who that is. Uh, I asked the Discord and um, Aaron, uh, another top five listener. So there's only two more spots to fill. Uh, he. Um, he says that uh, it's a main character. It's a major character who works with Leon a lot, but in like 
Resident Evil's like four and five. So it's setting shit up for later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I assume so. What do you think about that there's something I actually liked? I like, I mean, I assume you like that it's all a one night thing, right? That's a positive. I like it in theory, except that it's basically like starts at 11 p.m. and then ends at dawn. So like the whole movie's pitch black and it's just too dark. And I understand like that's what they're going for. Like they're they're trying to pitch it more towards the horror tone of the, the games than the right. than the more fun action-y tone of the movies. But still, like, uh, at a certain point, it's like, fucking, I was relieved when the sun came out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is more horror-y than I expected, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the score, they were using sort of like spooky scores, and a lot of the games are sort of like wandering around with a flashlight, like, what's behind this corner? What's in this room? They do solving puzzles. They do sort of a bit that must have been like a video game. I mean, it's even filmed like a video game where Robbie Amell, he's shooting the gun a bunch. He runs out of ammo. He starts like stabbing them and then he has like a lighter. That that was sort of filmed like a video game. That must have been like a thing. Yeah, I don't remember that one exactly, but there were a couple of scenes like that, like where like some of it's done from like the gameplay, but a lot of the scenes are like shot for shot for cut scenes from the video game. Like in some ways it almost felt like I was watching like the resident evil version of that Zack Snyder Watchmen movie. Yeah. You've, you and Henry used to talk all the time about the worst cops in movies, right? <laughs> That's right. I think there's contenders in both of these. Like the cops in First Blood are terrible because they don't care about this guy. They're just trying to like murder some guy. Oh, Brian Dennehy has to be one of the worst cops we've ever covered in movies because that situation doesn't happen in in First Blood no. if Dennehy just leaves him alone. If Dennehy right. just lets Rambo eat at a fucking diner, like he probably isn't going to do anything. Right, exactly. And, uh, everything's going to be all right. And then in this movie too, especially Leon is horrible. Like, there's a nerdy Leon guy, S. Right? Kennedy, full name, please. Leon S. Kennedy. There's that nerdy guy, right? That, like, he's like on a on a phone, on a video, and then he's like in a cell at one point. Oh, that, that scene! That scene where he gets eaten by the zombies from the game. I remember that. Okay. Well, Leon S. Kennedy is there, and he's a cop, and he like sees the guy, and the guy just like takes his gun off of his hip. Is like, hey, I got your gun now. He just like steals this gun off this cop, and then later. Yeah. Leon S. Kennedy sees this girl and he's like, hey guys, and he turns his head for one second and he looks back and the thing's gone. He like loses like an important person that they're trying to find. Yeah. The he- S stands for shitty cop. Yeah, sucks, this guy. <laughs> oh, well, I was gonna make the joke uh that I made on Twitter that um because I didn't like this movie as much as the Paul W. S. movies. I was gonna say WS stands for welcome sucks. For this one? You think this one sucks? Yeah, because it's welcome to Raccoon City. Yeah, yeah, we missed Paul W.S. Well, I mean, which ones did he not direct? He didn't do two and three. And two's the worst one, but three, he got that Highlander guy. It's still good. And he still wrote the movies. He was still involved in all six of them. Yeah, that's like his thing. Um, what do you and think he's about... Still, and he's still killing it, man. Check out Monster Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. An incredible film. <sighs> okay. Um, what do you think about the scientist guy? He, like, gets his wife killed... And he turns into a big alien monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, he's a great actor. So I was into that character just because it's Neil McDonough. Um, Neil Mc, you, you want a good villain in a, in a movie. You cast Neil McDonough. He's fantastic. I, he, my favorite thing he ever did was season three of Justified, a.k.a. the second best season of Justified. Oh, is the second season the best? Everyone knows the second season with Margot Martindale and the Bennets is the best season, of course. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Are you saying hell yeah because you saw it and you agree? Or are you saying hell yeah because that's a fun bit? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What else do you want to talk about with this movie? Um, I, mean, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't expect that guy to turn into a big lizard. Oh, yeah. Well, he becomes a, a licker, I guess. That's what they're called in the games. Oh, I didn't they know They got that. big tongues and they chase you around. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty fun then, I guess. Yeah. Um, it looked pretty scary. I will admit that. <laughs> really? You were scared? No, I guess. No, I, he tur- I don't know what he turned into, but the liquor, like the one when it wasn't Neil McDonough's face, when it was just like a thing with big teeth with a long tongue. Yeah. I found that thing a little disturbing. But um, 
once it was Neil McDonough, it looked just kind of silly. And he had all those eyes. He had a lot of eyeballs on his shoulder. And so I just sort of was like, yo, shoot him in those eyeballs. Yeah. What did you think about uh, Wesker's shooting him in the eyeballs. heel turn? Were you upset by I that? Mean, no, I was expecting it because his name was Wesker. And that was the name of the villain in the original. Oh, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I, well I didn't know that. I, I didn't expect it. Except for this yeah. guy just like looks like you'd cast him as like the bad guy in something. I didn't think yeah, it was it as horrible as you all, said. All these guys look like bad guys. There's no one likable in this movie except for Donal Logan, Kaya Scodelario. And the guy from Victorious. Oh, I guess so. You're right. There's a couple of good ones. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, I mean, nothing happens, really. They're just, like, walking nothing around. Nothing fucking. Like, the beginning happens. She shows up. We set all, up all the characters. And then the, it's the outbreak. And they're all, like, wandering around the mansion and the... And the uh, and the thing and then they find out that they're gonna like liquidate the town or whatever and so they have to like leave on this train which is exactly what happens at the end of the original movie by ws and uh once they're on the other side of the train it's light out and and they're okay and the survivors are leon the redfields and that little girl right they take uh neil mcdonough's jill lives oh jill's there too yeah Neil McDonough has a daughter, and they take her. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what what's gonna happen next. Can't wait. Feel bad for that mom. Why'd she yeah. have to die? Yeah, that was awful. He like completely got his wife killed. That was who's that gonna was raise terrible. these kids? None of these none of these people have the have the smarts or, or or caring to raise a child. They're all police officers. You don't think? Um, I mean, Claire's not a police officer. You don't you don't think they have God? She has a godparent. Um, do you have God well, parents? Well, I don't trust anyone who believes in God, but uh, <laughs> I don't have God parents. No, because my parents understand that that's a stupid concept. Um, but I mean, I'm sure there are people that would raise me if they died. Yeah, I mean, not anymore. I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, what's Kaya Scotelario's job in this movie? Like, where's she coming from at the beginning? She's hitchhiking I, into town. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that guy. He, like, gets bit by a dog and turns into a zombie. Oh, I did not like the shot of that dog um, licking the blood off of the pavement. It grossed me out. What, after the after they hit that woman? They hit that lady, and then they go inspect it, and the lady's gone. They find just, like, a pool of congealed blood, and the dog starts licking at it. And then the dog becomes a zombie, and that's from the games, too. You fight zombie dogs in the games. Oh, so that's... Oh, that's actually interesting. So it licks the blood and then turns into a zombie. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even pick up on that. That's actually interesting. That's a cool wrinkle. Yeah. All right. Shit. Good job, movie. All right. So, uh, I mean, that. What else you got? I, I'm fucking good. Uh, nothing. I mean, do you like Donal Log? Is he funny? I always love Donal Log. Donal Log is is forever a plus for me in movies. And to be honest, I'm gonna give him my MVP just because he's better than everybody else. Wow. Yeah, I thought you might do that. No, I can't do that. I'm gonna go uh Claire. Thought she was fine. You can't give really? it to Donal Logue. Why can't you? I mean I was gonna say he doesn't do anything, but I guess no like he does the same as everybody else. He's, he has I mean, probably the second most lines of anyone in the movie. Yeah, I guess you remember him doing more than basically anybody else, so I can I tell know. you more that he does than Jill. You don't like Journey, Jill's though. just sort of there to, journey. to be beautiful. Yeah, I know. But he, he's also playing Snake. That was fun. He made some references to movies. What are you going to do? All right. <laughs> all right. What, what are you giving this movie? A two. I kind of want to go one. Mm. I didn't really like anything about it. And it's... I, I don't blame you. It's not even that short, either. No, it is not. It's an hour and 47 minutes, which which felt long for me for this movie. It should have been 90. Um, yeah. Look, I didn't hate it. If there's another one, I'll happily watch it. But to me, Resident Evil's over. If there's a perfect six film franchise, I will 100% rewatch that franchise maybe multiple times in my life going forward. And um, so this was always going to feel ephemeral to me. All right. Um, who's your LVP? Uh boy. Uh I'll go with the uh, Wesker, the Hopper guy. All right. I was going to go the guy that dies in the cell, the like nerdy smart guy. 
No, I thought he was good. You know, so many of the guys in this movie are like burly, handsome dudes that like it, it was just nice to have one nerd in the movie. You know what I thought? I thought all the cops carried their guns pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you can see the people in movies that like should not be acting in this movie because they can't do the job. I thought all these guys like Robbie Amell, the guy from Victorious, the other guy, I thought they all did pretty well. All right. Good for you. Yeah. Good job. Glad. It's like the guys from uh, Doom. They all ha- they all hold their guns pretty well. Shout out Carl Urban. Yeah, so when you say holds their guns pretty well, you mean the way they do in video games. You don't mean the accurate way of holding guns. You just want actors to hold guns the way they do in video games. You know, you can tell. I don't. I don't know if it's that, that that's necessarily true, but you can just tell when people are holding guns. Like in Alicia Vikander held guns properly in the original Tomb Raider. I mean, in this, in, in like the latest Tomb Raider, whereas Angelina Jolie held her guns in the video game way. No, and I, I would imagine you would prefer that. No, I don't. No, no, I just think that they, they, I, it was believable that they were good at handling guns. All right, gun opinions from down south. Logan, Come on, no, be I be a dare. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm not into guns at all. Um, all right, well, I, I went that Ben guy, the guy from the cell. I thought he was pretty bad. Okay, fine enough. You're giving it a one? Yeah, one star. It's not quite one level to me. Johannes Roberts can, like, sell a scene. And honestly, as a video game, as a as someone who played those original games, like, you know, you get you have little moments where you're like, oh, that's from the game, and you don't you didn't have that. Right. Maybe if I did, yeah. I would have liked it a little more. Yeah. Um, but you know what? That's no excuse. You can't rely on that shit. Fuck off. Th- that's not my... It's their fault for relying on it I'm in the I'm telling movie. them fuck off. I'm not telling you fuck off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can't you can't do that. Um But I mean, don't they do that with like Marvel or no? Do what? Like if people have no I mean, I guess I don't I didn't read like Hulk comics and stuff and I can follow what's going on. Never mind. The Marvel Marvel's trying to tell you a story on the screen. And that's what those WS movies were doing. To me, this movie is is like almost it felt like supplemental material to the video game. Like this is a movie that's made directly for fans of the video game to watch and and go ah finally a Resident Evil film for us. It did Which make I guess me they want deserve. to play if that's what it's going for. Because during this, I was like, I'd rather just be playing this than like watching whatever is happening. I didn't think it looked that good either. The CGI in this movie, I thought it looked pretty lousy. Well, it's too dark. It's too dark. Everything's too dark. But that, I admit, anyway. that's probably why it's so dark, because CG work looks better in the dark. Yeah, I know, but that you can always tell they're doing that. And so you instantly make that connection in your brain. Oh, this is bad CGI. It's dark. Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. Make a Resident Evil set at Coney Island, like at three in the afternoon. <laughs> hey, listen, that third Resident Evil movie was like set in the desert. It was awesome. Oh, <laughs> that is pretty cool. What is that? Retribution? Yeah. Which one is that? No, that was Extinction. Oh, sorry. Uh, all right. So um, next week, we're back to Rambo, First Blood Part 2, and Rambo 3. And, uh, and you know, we'll get back to Resident Evil if they ever make another Resident Evil movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>